Hello again, friends. I wanted to cover some of the new Mega Colony support that got revealed. I wanted to discuss potential strategies, how I rate each card individually, and kind of discuss where I think the deck list is going to be going in the future. Um, there are some cards that have not been revealed yet for the set. However, I can't imagine there's going to be much more than one or two new reveals that we don't already know about that will impact the deck list. And the reason why I say that is because while we do have two triple R and two double R reveals left that I'm aware of, one of those is going to be Little Dorcas, and we already know what Little Dorcas is going to do. And one of them is going to be the Crit Sentinel, and we already know what that's going to do. So that means that we have at most two higher-ish rarity reveals left, and there's not a whole lot left that could change the scope of what the deck's looking like. I do think that there's a potential for another Grade 3 to come in that could have some effect that we absolutely adore, and it could make it into the list. I don't know. Uh, I would expect... I, I would actually, like, really not be surprised if we got a really solid giftless grade three that we actually want to run so we'll see how that plays out and we'll kind of keep our eyes on it because the giftless grade three in mega colony from the first set is going to be run at four in the new deck and that's crazy to me so let's go ahead and talk about the new mechanic the new mechanic is the cradle marker a cradle marker is placed on a rear guard not the circle but the rear guard itself and while the cradle marker is on the rear guard that card loses power equal to its original power and in addition to that, any effects that the card has from itself are gone. So if you have a card that says this card gets 5,000 power if you have 5 soul, which I think is, what, Dimension Creeper? Then that card would lose that ability. So instead of being 13,000 power, it would go all the way down to 0. However, if you have a card like Soul Saver Dragon, Soul Blast 5, give all of your units 15,000 power, then even if that card has a Cradle Marker on it, it will gain that 15,000 power and retain it. If you're talking about, say, a Force Marker, the Force Marker is not on the card, so that unit would retain a Force Marker. However, it will lose all of its keywords, including Boost, Intercept, and Twin Drive, although Twin Drive is probably not relevant since this is Rear Guard locked. So all in all, this is kind of like Delete for a Rear Guard. And then in addition to that, if your opponent calls a unit over the unit that has this marker on it, then you, the Mega Colony player, get to search your deck for a card that is the same grade as the unit that was being called over and then add that to your hand. And it doesn't have to just be called over, it's any retirement, so as long as the card hits the drop zone by any mechanic, you will get the effect. So that's how it works, and honestly, I think it's a really strong mechanic. The only limiting factor I'm seeing right now is that the game is really, really, really fast. And being able to last long enough to be able to get the cradle markers out at least to any efficient level is going to be difficult and the highest threats that the deck are going to have are going to be really fast decks so dragonic overlord the cross which has all of those effects stacked on the vanguard which you can't do anything about and amnesty messiah which functions by locking the rear guards and then once the units become unlocked well they're <laughs> they lose their cradle markers so we're completely vulnerable to those two strategies especially since they can go live before we even hit grade three Although we don't have to hit grade 3 to play Cradle Markers, as the new reveals show. So there's a lot to be considered as to the viability of Cradle Markers in the current metagame. So I definitely think that we need a backup plan in the deck, and I'm going to discuss that as we get further into the video. So let's go ahead and move on to the card that's not revealed yet, but we know what it does. Little Dorcas. So Little Dorcas, whose name is Prism Bird for some weird reason in this, has the skill, when placed from hand, look at five cards from the top of your deck, reveal up to one grade three from among them, add it to your hand, shuffle your deck. If you put a card into your hand, discard a card from your hand. So we already know that Little Dorcas is going to be grade one, 8,000 power, and have this skill. Now, his other skill is most likely going to be just based off of how all of the other cards have worked. If your opponent has a cradle unit on the field, plus 5,000 power. So just combine those two things, boom, Little Dorcas, triple R. We know what it is. Um, as far as the card's viability is concerned, I'm not sold that he's going to make the deck list. And this is going to make me probably in a minority position here. But when I'm looking at the deck list, grade one space is very, very tight. And there are a lot of good grade ones that we need to keep running, especially since Machining Hornet is a strictly better version of Little Dorcas. So keeping that in mind, I think that it's going to be harder to justify Dorcas in the build, but not impossible to justify. He's clearly going to be a good unit if you play him. He may not be optimal, though. So that's kind of where we're looking at with that, and obviously we're going to be having to consider cards like Brawny Jerk, which is necessary in any of the Protect matchups. Any type of game that's going to be going to turn 4 or turn 5, you're going to want Brawny Jerk. 
you have to factor in Butterfly Officer. Butterfly Officer is how you get units into Soul, and this is a very Soul heavy build. And it also gives plus power, so you really, really want to keep your Butterfly Officers. And then there's also potential viability for other cards too, and we'll discuss some of those, but I think that those two are honestly really, really like encroaching in on the territory that Little Dorcas wants to come in on too. So we'll see. Unless Little Dorcas has some crazy secondary skill that makes it mandatory, I'm not sure if it's going to be run or not. Or if it is run, I don't know if it's going to be optimal. So that's kind of where I'm at with the card. Still, it's going to be an amazing card. It's just like any other, you know, stride fodder is amazing. But Mega Colony already has three other top six searchers for grade threes. So I'm just not 100% sold. We'll see. Moving on, we have one of the new reveals. This card got revealed as I was making this video, so I went ahead and I re-recorded it. This card is called Cleared Breeze. Its skill is when placed, discard a card, draw a card. If the card you discarded was grade 3, put a cradle marker on one of your opponent's rearguard circles. So, is this card good? Is this card bad? I'm kind of on the middle about it. I don't know if there's enough grade 1 space to justify Little Dorcas, so I definitely can't imagine there's enough grade 1 space to justify this. I just don't see it happening. But if you're trying to make a specifically cradle-focused build, sure, you could run it if you want to try and optimize the units that get power based off of how many total cradles are out. And if your opponent has a bunch of rear guards out, maybe you could make that work. I just don't see it happening. I mean, it is a nice ride because you can discard a card and draw a card, filter, make sure that you get that Gridora. Because this deck and the matchups where you want to ride Gridora, you want to get Gridora. But it does have a lot of mechanisms to make that happen, so I think it's going to work even with only four ride targets for that particular matchup. So, honestly, solid card. I just don't see it having a place in the final build. The next card that got revealed today was Melody Mutant Nel Nympha. Nel Nympha's skill is during your turn, if your opponent has any cradle markers, this card gets 6,000 power. So because it's just, if there is a single one and not multiple, uh, it's just going to be capped at 15. If attacking into cradle markers was a good strategy then it being 15 would mean that they'd have to drop a heal trigger to guard for their zero power unit. I can't imagine that they, they I can't imagine that they would ever want to do that unless they had some mechanism to shove it to soul like pale moon or unless they wanted to lock it like link joker. So, unless it's something that they want to get back, I can't imagine that you're going to want to do that. So, in most matchups, I don't see you actively going for the play of trying to snipe their uh their cradle units. So, that's going to be something that you're going to want to play by ear. But all in all, uh, we'll see. Its other skill is when it's retired by rear guard circle, which is an effect that Gridor provides, by your card's ability, Soul Blast 1, choose one of your opponent's rear guards without a cradle marker and put a cradle marker on it. In theory, this sounds amazing. The problem is that Gridor is already going to have two cradle markers out, so it's going to be redundant. And then the other other problem is that you need your soul for Bolas. Bolas is a very soul heavy unit and it is amazing with what it does with the soul. So I'm not sold that this card is really going to be particularly viable, especially since I don't think the grade two space is going to be justifying it. So honestly, I'm going to say this one's one of the weaker cards for the set, but it's still not bad. I just think that compared to what the current metagame is, it's just not going to make the cut. <clears throat> so this is a, another new card, Destruction Spear Mutant, Doba Speed. Uh, this one got revealed uh, about a week ago, I think. And it's just when placed, counter blast one, mill two. If a grade one or greater card was put, when this card attacks, your opponent has to guard with two or more cards. So this card could be used with Gridora. I don't see it really having that much impact. The mill build obviously can't focus on milling your opponents to death unless they're playing something weird like Grand Blue, which is, mm, I don't see it happening. I mean, they could be playing Grand Blue with the new support, but I don't see... I don't see running a card that counters, you know, one or two specific clans being that particularly good of a pick overall in the main deck. And since there's no side decks, I, I don't see this card being run at all, to be honest with you. For the double R, we have Intimidating Mutant Dark Face. Now, this is where people are probably going to severely disagree with me. I don't think this card makes the I don't think this card makes the deck. Its effect is, when placed, discard a card from hand, choose one of your opponent's rear guards without a cradle marker, put a cradle marker on it. Auto, when it attacks a vanguard, counterblast one, choose one of your opponent's rear guards with a cradle marker on it, retire it, and this unit gets 5k until the end of battle for each rate of the chosen unit. 
if you have a metagame that is heavily dominated by particular builds that have units that are on the board that they can swap out without having them be retired so that the cradle effect is nullified i could see you wanting to run this card so that's link joker i don't know how many other builds can reliably do that pale moon takes all of their board off of the field prior to you having the opportunity to use cradle markers so even though they could do the in and out i don't see that being a thing so this is pretty much just link joker to my knowledge will link joker be meta absolutely but this is kind of that dichotomy. Do you run a do you run an entire grade three slot dedicated to your Link Joker matchup, or do you run a grade three that's going to be better overall? And honestly, I don't think that we have justification to run this card over the better grade three, which would be Gun and Colio. So that's kind of where I'm seeing it. I don't think this card makes the cut. I think that calling this card off of Gradora to get the extra Cradle Marker is also going to be pretty redundant, which I'll show you in a little bit. So here's the big reveal. Evil Governor, Dark Face, Gridora. Gridora's skill is Counterblast 1. Choose two of your opponent's rear guards without cradle markers and put a cradle marker on each of them. When it attacks, retire one of your rear guards. Search your deck for up to one grade 3. Call it to rear guard circle. Shuffle your deck. If you call the unit, both this unit and that unit gain 10,000 power until end of turn. So this card is honestly nuts. Now, this is going to make your deck list obviously top heavy. You're going to have a lot of grade 3s. I would say no less than 12. But there is a card that is better than every other card to be called with this, and that card is Hell Demise. And it's obviously Hell Demise <laughs> because of what Bolas does. So the fact that, you know, people want to be calling uh, Dark Face off of this, I don't see it. it the, the extra card that would be Cradled is instead going to be Stunned with Hell Demise. So I don't see this as being worth the extra investment that you're going to be making in resources the idea is that you discard the card for the cradle marker and then you get to draw it later but i would rather just not discard the card at all typically especially since uh whatever card that you're going to be cradle locking you're going to be restricted to getting another card of that same grade and that may or may not be what you want out of your deck anyway so i could see like the deck thinning for triggers argument especially since this is a 12 crit deck but ultimately like <laughs> Hell Demise is just the superior card because it's going to stand one of your other rear guards and give you five attacks at battle phase instead of just four. And that fifth attack is going to be very, very useful because the fifth attack is going to be from Bolas. Now, Bolas is a card that has entirely shaken the foundations of Mega Colony. In all of my other previous Mega Colony builds, you know that I was like, okay, Colio, great card, put it in. Stag, is great card put it in um cycloma tooth not so good of a card take it out and spark no longer relevant take it out so i was sitting here ending up with you know stag colio instead of having stag spark or colio and uh cycloma tooth so because i was riding that very different train understanding that stag beetle was the best card in mega colony up until today I knew that you wanted to have on call plus two on call plus two for soul blast two is incredible. There was nothing about stag beetle that was ever going to be anything other than amazing. The only way that stag beetle would become not run is if there was a card that did exactly what stag beetle wanted to do, but better. And this is that card. So here's what a spoiling mutant sticky bolas does. It's a 12 out of 10 card. Auto Vanguard Rearguard, when placed, Counterblast 1, check top 6 for up to 2 cards with Dark Face and their different card names, add them to your hand, shuffle your deck. So this is obviously very much like a Machining Mantis, same skill for the most part, it just doesn't get the bonus power. And it searches only for Dark Faces. Now this is going to incentivize you running the other Dark Face, and I get that. However, I don't think you want to for a lot of other reasons especially because of how amazing Colio is. But let's ignore that for a second. This is still a Counterblast 1 check top 6 for the specific grade 3 you're looking for, which is still really good. And in addition to that, its second skill is the Nuts. This is crazy. Rear Guard Circle. When it attacks, Soul Blast 1, it gets 6k until end of turn for each of your opponent's rear guards with Cradle on them. So you're going to use this card specifically to get Gridora. Gridora is going to be added to your hand. You're going to ride Gridora. 
you're gonna get you're gonna get two of those uh, cradle markers out. This card's going to get 12k from that. That's gonna make him 21k already. So with Gradora, you get the guaranteed 21k. At that 21k, you're guaranteed to get the draw. So that's already incredible. Like on attack, Soul Blast one draw is amazing. Let's do it again. How are we doing it again? Well, we use Gradora to sack our other rear guard to call Hell Demise. Hell Demise will stand Bolas. And now Bolas will attack again, Soul Blasting one again, and drawing you another card. Soul Blast two, plus two. This is identical to what we were getting with Stag, only we didn't have to deal with the awkwardness of the cards coming out at rest. In addition to that, this is also using the soul more efficiently. So this is going to <laughs> this is going to really change the scope of Mega Colony. Because now we're not running Stag Beetle. Without Stag Beetle, we're not running Water Gang. Without Water Gang, that's going to reduce the total amount of Counter Blast that we need, meaning that we can afford to do these extra top six searches with Mantis if we're going to keep running Mantis, which I think we will, and Sticky Bolas, so that we can be guaranteed to get that Gradora. You could even run Little Dorcas and then have a total of 16 cards that can check top five or top six, primarily top six, to get your Gradora win condition. So you're going to have so many outs to get Gradora. And then this card will just beat the ever-loving crap out of your opponent, and you're going to draw a bunch of cards from it. This is very, very good. This is honestly amazing. And there's no real downside to this card. So let's just say, hypothetically, you're fighting against a deck where you don't think Rador is going to do very well. It's Pale Moon. They don't have rear guards. Or it's Kagero. You're way far behind. You need to try and do what you can to win. You don't think Rador is going to be able to get you there. Well, what you would do is you would instead go for Gun and Colio. Gun and Colio gives you extra drive checks. Extra drive checks is also free cards. In addition to that, you also have a 20% chance to get another extra drive check. And those extra drive checks are either going to be, when you hit triggers, one of your 12 crits or one of your four heals to compensate and bring the game back into your favor. So this is going to be the better backup ride. It's way, way, way stronger than riding the other... Dark face. And this is going to be the better case scenario if you happen to miss Gradora or in the matchups where Gradora isn't going to be as useful. And then this will also transition you into having a better overall tactic to handle certain other mechanics. He can also be used later in the game to go for the high roll if you ride him over Gradora. And I think that honestly, this is where Mega Colony is going to be looking for its grade three lineup. You're going to have 12 Gun and Colio. Or so 12. <laughs> 4 Gun and Colio, 4 Hell Demise, 4 Gradora. And you can run more than 12. And honestly, with as many grade 3 searches as you have, you're just going to be filtering through your entire deck anyway and grabbing all the grade 3s. So there may be even room to run a 13 or 14. Now, 14 grade 3 Mega Colony was actually a meme build that topped a bunch in Japan. And I think that there's extra room to run Antlion. So the cool thing about Antlion is that if you bring Antlion in from Gradora, Antlion's already going to be 22k. Use Antlion skill to be 32k, boost it with Little Dorcas, it's going to be 45k. A 45k Antlion, and the only investment that you really had to make was just to call it off of Gradora and have a Dorcas booster, that's pretty good. So I think that there's also, you know, the potential chance to have Antlion in here. Maybe you run less Colio because you only need to have so many Colio, and, you know... There's, there's options on the table to say maybe go 3 Colio, 2 Antlion, so that you have 13 Grade 3s. But you definitely, for the baseline, are going to have 4 Hell Demise, 4 Gradora. For the deck list, we're going to have the starter, 12 Crits, including 4 Crit Sentinels, and 4 Heals. The Crit Sentinels should be obvious to most people by now. If you're facing Dragonic Overlord the Cross, Amnesty Messiah, any of these decks that want to beat your face in before you have a chance to ride to Grade 3, assuming you go second, you really need to make sure that you have the mechanisms to keep yourself alive long enough to make it to riding Grade 3. When you do ride Grade 3, you're a Protect 1 deck, so you're going to add that you know free Perfect Guard to your hand, and you can use that later. But to make it to that point, you really need to have a singular card that's 30k shield that can protect you. And then from there, use another singular card to stop another attack. That way, you can use the same amount of cards that you would have had to have dropped for your perfect guard to block two attacks and to stop more total damage. That's just how Protect 1 has to function right now. Other than that, I don't really see too much variance from that. You could go Protect 2 for the purpose of Bolas to start stacking power on Bolas because he's a restanding rearguard. There's some viability to that, but I honestly 
don't imagine that you're going to want to do that because he's not going to be sticking around. Your opponent's going to be doing everything in their power to get rid of him the second he's on the field. You just need to take advantage of the fact that you're drawing a crap ton of cards every single turn. And from there, get a second bowl loss and then a third bowl loss. So I would not focus too much on the protect two tactic. I would go for protect one. So for the grade ones, we have four Hornets. That's just obvious. It checks top six for a grade three. It moves to soul, which you need soul for all of your costs. It's 8K. And if you'd see Vanguard Circle, then you just get the card for free. There's not a single downside to this card, and it is just strictly better than Little Dorcas, in my opinion. You're also going to want to run three Butterfly Officers. You're not going to have the same problems with Butterfly Officer that you have in other decks, where because you're going to be sacrificing the plus power unit, typically, with Gridora, or because you're going to be using the plus power on Bolas to make it have that 10k and restand, it's just going to get so much more value for you in this particular deck than it got in any of the other decks. And that's going to just make it absolutely fantastic. Now, we actually have choices for the final grade one spot. We have Little Dorcas and Brawny Jerk. Both are very, very good cards. The problem with Little Dorcas is that he's almost reaching the point of hyper redundancy because we have every single other grade three searcher and we're only missing one copy of it. So like there are 16 potential grade one searchers. We're running 11 of the 12 other ones. Do we really need to run three more? I'm not sold that we do. But if Little Dorcas is a 13k booster, that could be very, very useful for Antlion. And it could also be very, very useful for anything else that happens to be in that row. So I, I do like and appreciate the concept of a 13k booster that also searches for grade threes. So I'm not going to knock it just yet. Um, I think it's still a very, very good pick. And I honestly imagine most people will choose it in their deck. And it will prove itself because it's obviously not a bad card. However, Brawny Jerk has the ability to discard a card from your hand, which is typically going to be a grade 3, and force your opponent to discard something from their much, much smaller hand. And that's going to be fantastic. If you can make it late enough in the game where Brawny Jerk is live, Brawny Jerk is incredible. The only problem is, will you be able to make it that far? And that's the big consideration as far as Brawny Jerk is concerned. Brawny Jerk is a late game card. We have to understand this and we have to know that are we going to make it to that point? Is it worth investing into a card that may not help us get to that point? So all of that needs to be considered, but for your protect matchups where you're fighting in any type of mirror against OTT, against Grand Blue, against anything else that's you know heavily defensive or even offensive but then keeps a hand, Brawny Jerk is going to be able to really push them in and you're going to be able to just absolutely wreck their crap. Because <laughs> the card is just ridiculous. So I think that that's the grade one lineup. You can pick what you want to pick for that, but you could go either or. For the grade twos, four Bolas is mandatory. Bolas is so incredible that it actually made both Water Gang and Stag Beetle completely obsolete as a singular card. The fact that it does everything that both of those cards wanted to do, as far as drawing you two cards and Soul Blasting two to get card advantage, is incredible. <laughs> and the fact that it can do it more than once and doesn't need to, you know, move to Soul or call the cards at rest and make it soft advantage instead of hard advantage, and the fact that it's like drawing the cards and giving you like direct hard advantage, it's just, it is incredible. And then it being the restander on your board that gets plus power, it, it, there's just no downsides to Bolas. Bolas is absolutely incredible. Of course, we have three Mantis. Mantis is going to search your deck for your extra grade threes, which you have plenty of. So it's almost never going to fail. And then it's going to be 15k. 15k is great. Uh, the other cool thing about Mantis is that assuming you're running Dorcas and assuming Dorcas is 13k, then with Mantis and the Counter Blast, you're talking about a 28k row. And 28k is a beautiful, beautiful number to have without any other effects on the field. So I think that that's something else to have in mind for consideration. And the other tech card is Bloody Hercules. Bloody Hercules, when it hits, give a card 6k, counter charge 1. I think that those are going to be amazing effects. Again, I don't think it's necessarily going to be best to attack the Cradle Markers, but I do think that it has a lot of potential just to put a lot of pressure on your opponent and force them to guard the attack that they may not want to attack, or may not want to guard, sorry. So I think that rounds out the grade 2s, and I think the grade 2s right now are pretty static, but if more grade 2s get released, we could absolutely see something taking either Mantis or Hercules' spot. We'll see. So for the grade 3s, we have 4 Ghidorah and 4 Heldemise. I'm completely static on this. I don't think you would ever run less than that. I can't imagine any situation, I can't imagine any card being printed in which this stops being the case. 
these cards are bread and butter. The, uh, like, there, there is no reason not to run these two cards together. They love each other. Like, I I'm shipping it right now. I am shipping it. Gridora, X Hell Demise, one true pairing. This is the couple. We're running these cards together. No exceptions. But because this is a grade three intensive deck, we can run more cards too. Colio is going to be the backup ride, and Colio compensates for those weaknesses again that you have with decks that don't have rear guards or decks that you need to drive check extra triggers in order to compensate for the disadvantages that you're already at. Your your deck can still function just fine, even if you don't uh, run the markers, although Bolas will be a little bit vanilla, but you still have so many other cards that can still do stuff, even if you don't have those markers out. So it's not going to hurt you that badly to run Colio. And I think that Colio is honestly just such a great backup ride, such a great backup plan, and even a good finisher in the situations in which you want to go for that route. And it may even necessarily be the case that Colio just has to stay in the deck just to compensate for how fast some of those other decks are. And any extra check that you get that can potentially give you that heal trigger to alleviate that early game that you might have lost will help out immensely. And of course, rounding out the grade threes, we have two antlions. Now, the reason why it's two instead of one, you're probably going to get the antlion that you wanted much, much earlier than you would like. However, you want to have an antlion in deck so that you can call it off of Gridora mid-battle phase, and then with that Dorcas boost, hit 45k. Without the Dorcas boost, it'll be 40k, which is still a pretty good number. But typically, the idea is to use your brawny jerks if you're not running the um, if you're not running Dorcas to force the cards out of their hand and then pop them with the big anti-sentinel card. So you have plenty of options on the table to make this card work. And I think Antline has got a really, really solid spot in this deck. And that isn't to say that there aren't other techniques that you could use other than just focusing on your Bolas. You could even have an Antline that's already out, have it attack, assuming you have two great threes in soul, discard your two, swing for the anti-sentinel, and they'll be like, whew, guarded it, glad I'm safe. And then use Gridora to call Hell Demise, stand Antlion, attack with Antlion again. And mind you, you'd be still using all of the old tactics that you used, like buffing it up with your Butterfly Officers and then moving it to Soul at the end of turn. So I could see plays like that also being pretty viable for this deck to use as a last turn final push and really make your opponents cry. So with that being said, I think that this pretty much covers the deck list. I don't think that there's too much else that could reasonably be swapped in or swapped out. That being said, uh, I don't think any grade ones are going to be printed that are better than Dorcas or Jerk, so I think grade ones are static. Grade twos, I could totally see them coming in and printing some type of unit that's like Counter Blast One, Soul Blast One, On Call, uh, make a cradle unit out of one of your opponent's units. And if we get something like that, I could totally see us uh, fitting that in over maybe Hercules. And the reason for that is it would give us the opportunity to do something similar like that with Colio where we could have the Cradle unit being made and still have a Colio Vanguard, which would be very, very, very useful. Um, I still think that, you know, the, the ideal, the goal is going to be to get Gridor out as soon as possible, and we have several mechanisms to make that happen. So that's not going to be a worry. But I, I do think that a Grade 2 that could make that type of marker has the potential to come in and impact the deck list, and I also think there's a possibility it could be printed. For the grade 3s, they may make some ridiculous giftless grade 3, and I think that there's a very real possibility for that. But I'm a little bit skeptical that whatever they make is going to be good enough to justify the removal of Hell Demise. So it's, it's kind of like on that fence there, because assuming that it is as good as Hell Demise, what are you going to do? Run 8 giftless grade 3s? I mean, there, there's just not a whole lot of space there. And I think that Colio is the backup ride and Antline is the finisher is just going to be mandatory. And I can't imagine that whatever it is, it's going to be as viable as Hell Demise and or a better finisher than Antline. So our grade threes are pretty much static at this point, so far as I'm aware. So I think that that's all I have for this video. Um, I hope that this was in-depth enough for the Mega Colony players that were really looking for this. While a lot of the fun combo cards that made Mega Colony really fun and really tactical in the previous sets are now no longer going to be run, I still feel like there are some viable tactics that you can use, such as the double ant line play that I mentioned, or using your bow loss while you have a gun and Colio Vanguard, or just using gun and Colio to begin with, which none of these are really particularly that complicated in comparison to the previous combo play that Mega Colony was utilizing before, but I do feel like some of these things may not necessarily been as obvious as they could have been, especially just with a precursory glance at the cards. So I'm hoping I was able to add something of value to the Mega Colony conversation here, and I'm hoping that people do find this input to be fairly valuable. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one.